right. So we're good with Hadley Media. The meeting is being recorded. Um, all right, I'll start start with the usual. All votes will be taken via roll call, and uh, we'll call the meeting to order for Wednesday, June twenty third, twenty twenty one. And in attendance from the select board is David Phil, Amy Parsons, John Weskevitz, and Jane Nevin Smith. And uh, we'll reflect for the record if Joyce uh, joins later on. Uh, first order of business is the consent agenda. We have warrants AP2149, AP2149S, AP2149V, AP2150, AP2150S, AP2151, AP2151S, AP2152-2, PR2125, and PR2126. PVPC Greener Communities Memorandum of Understanding, Select Board will approve that. Hadley Police Department resignation, Dan Warner resignation. Hadley Police appointment as Sergeant, Thomas Shabbat. Hadley Police appointment to full-time police officer, Ethan Krause. Hadley Police appointment, Special Police Officer, Brianna Yusko. Hadley Police appointment, Special Police Officer, James Ryan. And we have a one-day liquor license, multiple dates for Art Show 7, 9, 9, 10, 9, 24, 11, 12, and a wine dinner on 9, 24 for Friends of the COA. Charlotte Smith Estate and Library Dec Decree, Select Board approves, and Board and Committee's reappointments for FY22. Um, I'm going to pull out the police appointments because I see the police chiefs here, but um, if we could get a motion for the others. So move. Oops, sorry. All right, got a motion by Jane, if I could get a second. Second. Second by Amy. And anything else on those? Carolyn, roll call. Bill? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay. And uh, Chief Mason, do you want to uh, talk a little bit about these uh, police officer appointments? Absolutely. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. I can't get my laptop to, uh, to work with this new Zoom link, so I'm on my, luckily I have my desktop up and running. Um, I can't get video on this though, so uh, bear with me. Um, I see that Brianna and James are here, unfortunately, with uh, schedule mix-ups from last week. I have uh, Tom Chabot's in training uh, halfway across the state uh, right now, and uh, Ethan is working uh, one of his other jobs. So I will do the two folks who are here first. Um, we'll do Brianna first. Brianna is going to be recommended. Brianna and James are both going to be recommended to be special police officers. These are backfill positions as they normally would. Uh, many of you know what we use these positions for. They are essentially to kind of, uh, they're, they're entry level positions for police officers and we utilize them to um, backfill shifts um, to avoid, you know, ordering officers in as well as see uh, whether or not these folks can cut the mustard and uh, work out for, you know, to be full-time police officers at some point here in Hadley. So Brianna graduated from Hopkins Academy and is originally from North Hadley. She has been a full-time public safety dispatcher for the city of Northampton since 2014 and a part-time dispatcher in Hadley since 2018. She earned her bachelor's degree in both criminal justice and psychology from Westfield State University and completed the Reserve Intermittent Police Academy on May 22nd of this year. We feel that her several years in public safety dispatch and her familiarity with the town and residents will give her a significant advantage in her training to become a Hadley police officer. James Ryan uh, graduated from East Hampton High School, but has been a resident of Hadley for the past three years. James was a UMass police cadet he has worked at both the Hampshire and Hamden County Houses of Correction, and he interned for our police department. James has earned his bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Elms, Elms College and has also completed the same Reserve Intermittent Police Academy, which graduated on May 22nd of this year. I would like to recommend to the select board 
uh, that both of these individuals be appointed as special police officers for the Hadley Police Department. Gotta get a motion. I move. All right, motion by Jane. Second. Second by Amy. And any other discussion on these two appointments? Carolyn? Bill? Yes. Laskevitz? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Pearson? Yes. All right. Carolyn, it's really hard to hear you. Okay, I'll open up my big mouth a little bit louder. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations, guys, and uh, uh, thank welcome you for. Aboard. Yeah, welcome to Hadley and yeah. appointments. All right, and uh, Chief, do you want to say anything about the others that are not here? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'll take care of uh, those two right next. Uh, Brianna and James, just uh, be advised. Sergeant Green will be reaching out to you within uh, probably the next day or two to work out the next steps in the process. Thank you both for being here. Um. So the next, the next one I'd like to do is Ethan Kraus. Um, this is going to be a recommendation for appointment to full-time police officer. This is not an additional position. This is a uh, backfilling of our open position um, that we lost uh, Officer Gilbert to the state police recently. Um, Ethan Kraus uh, currently works for us. He resides in South Deerfield. He's a graduate of Frontier Regional High School and has his associate's degree in criminal justice from Greenfield Community College. Ethan has been a special police officer for Hadley PD since May of 2020 and also works part-time for the Deerfield Police Department. He's also a corporal in the United States Marine Corps Reserve. During his time in Hadley, Ethan has successfully completed his field training and is well-liked amongst the staff and has been working shifts for the last several months for us. I would like to recommend to the select board that Ethan Krause be appointed as a full-time police officer for the town of Hadley. Yeah, so moved. Second. Motion by John, second by Amy. Any other discussion? Carolyn? Bill? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Carson? Yes. All right. Well, congratulations. And one more, Chief? Or is one that... more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One more. Um, the next one is um, Tom Chabot. Um, Tom, as I mentioned, is in a, a training, uh, a week-long training that is in, I believe, Foxborough right now. He is in a, a late day of training and was unable to be here even on Zoom. Um, Tom currently resides in Gill, and he graduated from Greenfield High School. He has an associate's degree in criminal justice, and prior to working in Hadley, Tom was a police officer for Greenfield Community College, Mount Holyoke College, the Northfield Police Department, and was also a corrections officer at the Franklin County Jail. Tom has worked for our agency since 2017 and has been an acting sergeant for nearly a year. Tom has continued to be very productive and hardworking uh, through his acting time position and has led his midnight shift by his own example, and it has shown through their productivity. Since taking over his acting supervisory role, uh, Sergeant Chabot has become our grant coordinator. He oversees traffic enforcement and he supervises our drug addiction response team. Uh, this board uh, appointed Tom Chabot to the role of acting sergeant in August of last year. Tom has earned this role um, to be uh, put forth for permanent sergeant, and I would be recommending to the board that uh, Tom be promoted to permanent sergeant for the Hadley Police Department. So moved. Second. All right. Motion by Amy, second by John. Any other discussion on Tom? Carolyn? Bill? Yes. Miskevich? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Carson? Yes. All right. Well, congratulations to all those officers that are newly promoted or appointed. And thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right. I, uh, I believe I have another item on the agenda, so I will hang around for later. Yep. We'll get to that really quickly. Um, one thing I have to say is uh, people were asking why the meeting was canceled last week. Um, with the uncertainty of the legislation regarding remote access or in-person or, or what kind of blend of the two we had to do, um, made the decision to cancel the meeting and just push it off to this week. So that's why things were moved back. Um, 
they did pass legislation allowing remote access, I think through 2022 at some point. Carolyn, is that correct? Uh, I think it's 23. I think 23, okay, all right. So quite a while, so it gives us some other, some options, which is a good thing. So uh, for now, we'll continue with the Zoom. Just wanted to put that out there. Um, public comments, let's hit that real quick. Uh, 15 minutes and please limit your comments to three minutes per person so that others may speak. If you're here for public comments, turn on your camera, wave at us, let us know that you're here for that reason. David, I think it's March of 22 with the remote and we voted to so far just to go to like September or something. Yeah, we'll reassess later. We'll have to put it on the agenda for later on. Yep. <clears throat> Last call for public comments. Okay, we'll keep going. Uh, I told Ed that we would jump down real quick to vacation carryover 7.1. Ed, do you want to talk about what you have for that? Uh, yes, the board voted last December to extend a number of vacation hours to June. However, there were still many travel restrictions still in the midst of the pandemic. And um, so a lot of folks, you know, weren't really able to take vacation, especially those that were involved uh, with COVID operations. A lot of folks were still stretched a little thin. Um, now that most of the restrictions are lifted and there's no more travel restrictions, uh, many folks are vaccinated. I'm requesting that the board extend those vacation rollovers to December 31st. So moved. Motion by Jane, if I could get a second. Second. Second by Amy. Any discussion on extending the vacation time? Uh, when we voted it in the last time, it was use it or lose it, so we don't get into what are we going to do for next year when they just use <clears throat> time, you know? I'm sorry, you broke you broke up, John? Is this just going to keep going on and carrying over and carrying over year after year? No, no. It's um, uh, for most of these folks, uh, what must be used by June 30th will carry over into December. After that, they'll lose it. Um, they'll go back to what they had basically accrued without it. We're tracking it both with and without. Is, is there really a lot of hours that we're talking about? Or not? <clears throat> um, anywhere from, looks like four and three quarter hours all the way to 182 and a half hours, but that person almost never takes vacation. Anything else on this? I don't have anything for you, sir. No. All right. Uh, Carolyn, you have a roll call. No. Yes. Discovered? No. Nevin Smith? Yes. Carson? Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ed. Thank you for your time, everybody. Have a good night. All right. You too. You too. All right, I'm going to jump down to, uh, let's see, 6.3, Acovita Road. We'll get uh, the chief out of here. Um, we had had some public requests for a speed limit signs on Acovita or reducing the speed on Acovita due to vehicle, excessive vehicle speeds. Uh, chief, you want to talk about what you did to, I guess, survey the road and, and what you found? Sure. Um, we uh, so we put our speed speed board up there to do uh, a, just a quick a short traffic study. It was up there for about twelve days, I believe. Um, essentially, we uh, measured the speed of the vehicles coming off of the paved section of the roadway because we figured that that would be the place where they would be traveling the fastest. I know that the the dirt portion is also a concern, um, but we figured that it, you know with the uh, with the road being paved in one section as far as speed goes or excessive speed that would be um you know the best spot to measure at least for the time being um essentially what we discovered was that the average speed uh, of vehicles on the road was 32.5 miles per hour um 
There was an average volume per day of 9.7 vehicles. We measured eastbound traffic because that was the traffic coming off the paved section uh, for a total volume of, I believe, 100, a little over 100 cars uh, in the period of time that it was up there. So uh, with those, you know, with those findings, it, you know, dependent upon what the, the board's appetite is, um, a 20 mile an hour speed limit or a 25 mile an hour speed limit uh, actually would be slower than what any of the cars that we measured were traveling uh, on that road. Um, I think perhaps one of the most important um, parts of the summary of the speed study is, is to focus on would be the 85th percentile of speed. Um, this this uh, speed study and, our, and the summary that our traffic sign gives us, gives us um, you know, an average speed, and it gives us 50th percentile, 85th percentile, and things like that. And if the state does a speed study, what they use to determine speed limits is actually the 85th percentile uh, of, of the speeds that they get when they do their own studies. And in this case, the 85th percentile of speed is 33.1 miles per hour. So I certainly wouldn't, you know, dare to make the supposition that the state would determine that the speed limit would be 30 or 35 miles per hour, but it's a pretty good guess that that's what they would set it at if they were setting it. Uh, the problem is, is that half of the road is a dirt road used by the farmers, um, which certainly, you know, you don't want people going that fast. And the other half of the road is a paved road, which they may likely look at that and set the speed, you know, around 30 miles per hour. So, um, we did, you know, we did get a, uh, one vehicle basically traveling what I would describe as excessively, but the speed board gives us, um, it kind of ranks all of the vehicle speeds and it gives us risk factors. It's the same speed study that we used for, uh, you know, Rocky Hill Road. It's the same one we used on North Lane where we put the speed bumps recently. Um, and the board only registered a total of seven vehicles in the course of this time, which hit you know, a risk category. And the only category that it did hit was a low risk, which would indicate, you know, a five miles per hour over the, the posted limit, uh, or I shouldn't say the posted limit, over the, lim the speed limit of the road. Um, so with, with only one or two vehicles being excessive, uh, you know, we're, I hate to say we're right back where we started, but generally speaking, uh, the, the 25 mile per hour town-wide speed limit uh, is still an option to the town, uh, which you wouldn't, you know, you would incur less cost to have to put up signs on every road where someone wants a speed limit sign put up. But you also have to, you know, those other issues that I believe Joyce brought up the last time um, with, you know, one way or potentially blocking, you know, blocking that road and allowing, you know, the farmers to use their, their half, quote unquote, their half, um, and uh, the general public to use the other half. I think the original complaint was that, or not, a, not necessarily complaint, but the, the thought from some of the folks who live down there was that when traffic is really bad on Bay Road, people are trying to get out onto Route 9, they'll sometimes use Aqua Vita and kind of try to skirt around it. I don't know how on earth they get out onto Route 9 from that point, considering how traffic is, uh, you know, during those times, but um, you know, that was the thought. So uh, I, uh, I sent an email to the board, uh, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago with, you know, those few recommendations. Um, but in all reality, you know, I, I mean, this, this road is not showing the types of speeds that, uh, that we would, you know, take any, any major action on. We can certainly do some traffic enforcement on it, but the, the amount of vehicles that uh, are using that road are, are, you know, much, much less than any of the other roads that we, uh, that we have to patrol. And Keith, just to verify, this was done while the students were still in town. This was done in May, um, okay. mid, mid, it was done in mid May. Okay. Okay. Um, like it's not really as big of a problem as, as they say it is. You know, I, I think maybe we ought to have a discussion about a town-wide speed limit. 
you know, 35 miles an hour or something like that. Well, could I, could I answer? Can somebody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm Edward Fedor from Acavita Road 27, and I've done some research on this project as well, and I would like to be heard. Quickly. I measured a typical road in Hadley that has a 30 mile an hour speed limit and a typical Hadley road with 30 mile an hour speed limit is 24 feet wide and it has a marked line in the middle which is yellow and it has white lines on each side it's 24 feet wide Aquavita road has a, a the widest limit is 14 feet our usable width is half that of a typical 30 mile an hour road. We have a blind curve between house number three and seven, which you have to apply your brakes to go around. And we have houses that when they park their, park their vehicle in their driveway and they open the tailgate to take out groceries to walk in the house, they're within two steps of the edge of a 14 foot wide road that two cars are supposed to pass at 30 miles an hour in opposite directions. 30 miles an hour is a speed limit that only somebody could recommend that hasn't driven down our street. At 5.30 watching the news, I, I watched the news for a half an hour tonight and I counted 10 cars go by. To say that 20 cars go down our street in the 24 hour period is incorrect. I have a security camera that faces up street and down street, and I watch that for an hour. There's more than 20 cars that pass through my security camera. Last week, I mowed two neighbors' grass, and it took me a total of a half an hour. Their houses are close to the street. I just, just for the half an hour, I counted cars. There were five in the half an hour that I mowed two neighbors' grass. If, if a child, a seven-year-old child is on a bicycle, his father is on a skateboard being pulled by the chocolate lab, and the mother is on a silver bicycle, and the road is 14 feet wide, and you have somebody coming down at 30 miles an hour, someone is going to get hurt. My primary contributing comments is to protect the residents not the checkbook. Our road is extremely narrow. 30 is completely out of the question. And whoever suggests that hasn't driven down our street at 30 miles an hour. And certainly hasn't encountered another vehicle in the opposite direction. And a study hasn't thoroughly been done. I took a tape measure and took a picture of it on the stretch from Russell Street to just before the curve. Basically, the marina's on one side, the woods are on the other. And that tape measure, our usable width is 14 feet wide. And not to repeat myself, but a typical 30 mile an hour street in Hadley is 24 feet wide. East Street, East Street connects Bay Road to Russell Street. When I pull onto East Street, to head to the post office, I can see the stoplight. It's a clear shot. It, you could land an airplane on it. That's 30 miles an hour. You can't possibly say that 30 miles an hour is safe for Aquavita Road. You, you have to break just as slow to go through the blind curve. There's blind driveways where people are backing out. I didn't write the house numbers down. You, you can't possibly set you can't possibly set 30 for a speed. That's that's unreasonable. Sure. I, spoke Sir, I, don't, I don't I don't think anybody was making a recommendation to set the speed limit at 30 miles per hour. I was just making a general comment that when the state does speed studies, they look at certain aspects. And yes, road width is absolutely one of them, which is why I said, you know, I would never make the supposition that uh, the state is going to set the speed would set the speed at 30 to 35 miles per hour. What I am saying is, is that during that time, 
That was the amount of vehicles that drove through. And during that time, we had the speed limit set at our, on our sign at 25 miles per hour. No one was driving 25 miles per hour. And that obviously would include any of the residents who live on Aqua Vita Road. Everyone was going about 30 or, or sometimes more. The average speed was more than 30 miles per hour. So that's, that's, that's what you're saying. Okay. That, so you're not saying that that's what the speed should be because everybody's no. doing it. No, no, Because everybody's doing 50 <laughs> over the bridge on, on Russell Street. It's very difficult to pull out of our street because right. everyone's doing 50 over the bridge. All right. Uh, I'm going to mute because this isn't an argument. This is a, a select board discussion. Um, Can I just interject a couple, just a couple things, please, because very quickly, I, they are very quick. I will tell you that I have, I traveled in and out during that time period and I consciously drove 20 miles per hour. So to say that no one was driving less than 25 is, I, I, I take offense to that because I did it consciously. Typically, I'm 25 miles per hour. Secondarily, I think there was an inaccurate assumption made. The traffic coming from the dirt end toward the tar end, they're the ones that are driving in excess. They typically don't slow down when they hit the tar. The folks coming from the tar end going to the dirt actually drive slower. I also wanted to point out that on North Lane on the corner, the speed limit is set at 20 miles per hour. And then on Cemetery Road headed toward Cross Path Road on that corner, the speed limit is set at 15 miles per hour. Okay. Select board, uh, what are your thoughts? And, uh... Mike, have you had any trouble with those uh, signs and the speed limits as far as you know? Meaning what? The, How accurate are they? They're accurate. We use them all the time. The, the only issue is, is uh, we, we were only able to measure in one direction at this point, and we were may only able to measure for uh, 12 days because the signs were needed in about six other places to do other speed studies. So we freed one up. Um, and, you know, if someone is heading westbound, and if the, the concern is that they're speeding they're going faster on the dirt portion than the, than the paved portion, which, you know, certainly could be true. Um, you know, I, we can, I, I can certainly try to get them back out there again, but they are absolutely accurate. And uh, on the 12 days that they were out there, folks coming eastbound, the, were going in excess of 25 miles per hour. The cars that, that were measured were going in excess of 25 miles per hour going eastbound on the road. I heard uh, the chief say that the signs were set up where the uh, pavement went to dirt. I think if he has can free up a sign, we should set one on that corner he speaks of right after the marina, because his count also did not show residence cars, which someone who lives there and was counting cars would notice. So if we put it on the corner between the woods and the marina and got a count for whatever number of days is reasonable, we might have a better read on this. Um, so you want to put it on the on the Route 9 side of the road facing eastbound? I want to, cars that turn come over the bridge and turn right are the ones I want to count. That's the ones we counted. But you counted them way down by where it turned to farmland. <laughs> No, the sign was in that area. It was measuring the vehicles that were still on the pavement because we assumed cars would be going faster on pavement than on dirt. Was it in, the, where was it relative to most of the residential properties? Well, most of the residential properties are on the paved section and there's a few after where the paved section ends. So, do you know like which house number it was opposite or something? No, I don't know exactly which house number. Okay. So can we just get a, um, a read at some point when it's, you know, when the equipment is available, go in the other direction so that we're getting 12 days the other other way on the other side of the road? Yes. Is we that can possible? That. Yep. And uh, Amy, while you're here, was were the residents asking for a, what a 25 mile per hour zone or a 20 miles per hour zone? The, the suggestion was 20 miles per hour with the 
with the um, intent that we would assume that people would actually go 25. Well, um, I mean, I don't, I don't have a real issue and I don't think the DPW would have an issue of throwing up a couple 20 mile an hour signs in the meantime and see if that has makes a difference even for the traffic study. Chief, is that something that's uh, relatively a cheap solution possibly? Sorry, sorry. The select board uh, are, are the uh, uh, traffic enforcement authority of the town. You can make determinations on speed limits uh, where speed limit signs go, and you can determine it be 10 miles an hour for uh, for all intents and purposes. So if you want 20, uh, if that if the the thought is is that that will resolve the problem, and um, you know we can move on to the next street, uh, we can certainly do. You can certainly do that. All you have to do is uh, direct uh, Chris to to take care of that, and they can put signs up. So wh why don't we just try that 20 mile an hour? And then um, if it, when you have a free sign, if you could throw it out there and do the study though and see what kind of effect that has. And I do think that we need to look at a townwide 25 mile an hour unless otherwise posted or whatever speed limit unless otherwise posted because this is gonna be on every street the way it's going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the uh, that was the initial recommend. Uh, well, now it was one of the recommendations uh, that would you know hopefully solve this problem as well as others. The the issue is is that you know if you want this road slower than the rest, um, right? You know that's that's kind of what you're you're opening it up to for every road that wants it at twenty or or fifteen or whatever it is. We're happy to do it. We'll get it out there. So then, do we want to set it at twenty five and see what kind of effect that has? And see if you know if, we're, if we're uh, only there. I would say only if Chris has the signs already. I, I would hate to these these are not cheap. Right. Um, I would hate to buy you know a sign and then and then determine that you know we're going to go down to twenty and then have to buy another one. All right. So then why don't we see if Chris has some twenty? If you know if the select board wants to make that motion and vote on that, we can see if Chris has. A, I'm sure he has a twenty five mile an hour speed limit sign somewhere. Yeah. I, I... I don't have a problem with 20 or 25, but I'd still like to see the dirt section. If people really think they're traveling that fast, to put a sign up there for a couple of weeks and see what's going on. And then- uh, Oh, Chris is here. The gentleman's talking about uh, the corner right where the telephone's pretty tight to the road, I believe, where where the dike, the temporary dike starts. It's actually the roadway, but right on that- You're, road. you're on the wrong side of the bridge. You're on the wrong side of Route 9. There is no telephone pole. The telephone pole is right on the corner across from uh, Vanasa's house. I've been down that road for 50 years, so I know what I'm talking about, sir. Yeah, it's not close to the road, though, but I get it. I, I took a poll of, I don't have to speak, but I can show you folks of the. No, I, I understand that. Aquavita but what, people, Aquavita people, and what they're with. Chris, do you have um, 25 mile an hour signs at the DPW available? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we have 25 miles an hour. Do you have 20? any 20 mile an hour signs? We, um, we don't have the 20 miles an hour. We only have that will cover the, the area. We recently picked up 25 when we are installing some on nightly and not lane. So, But if the board wants us to get 25 uh, out within the week, we should be able to get it. So I am making a motion right now. I'm moving that we add the 25 mile an hour signs and then also uh, measure the other side of the road and go from there. And if we need to order 20 mile an hour signs as a recommendation in the future, then we can do that. But since we have the 25 mile an hour signs, I'd like to do something currently so that we're doing something. Yeah, all right, I'll second that. Okay, motion by Amy, second by John. Any other discussion from the select board on this? Okay, Carolyn. No. Excuse me, oh, I'm sorry, and I don't mean to interject. I just want to make, there was a, somebody made a very good point. The question was, did you do the speed right. test when the um, college students were here? And it, it does make a, it makes a big difference. So I just wanted you to keep that in mind. Thank you. 
Yeah, the police chief said he did do it in May, so the students were still here. Yep. So there should be less cars and slower cars, you would think, this this time of year, but we'll see. Um, Carolyn, oh, please. Bill? Yes. Chungo, I'm sorry. Miskevich? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Carson? Yes. Okay. And uh, Chief, thanks for your time. And I think that's all you have yeah. for tonight, right? Yes, sir. All, all set. Right. Thank all you. Right. All right. So um, let's go up to uh, cultural 6.2, Cultural Council Picture Wall. And Board of Health is here. say again. Board of Health is here. Yep. And Cultural Council as well. I believe there was someone here. Is she go away? There yep. she is. I'm here, uh, Maureen from the Cultural Council, but I'm not sure what you're referring to at the wall. I have another um, nominations for uh, new members. Mm. We already voted on the FY22 nominations in the consent agenda that had previously been submitted. If someone has a letter of nomin uh, letter of interest to be added to the committee, that needs to go to the select board through Jennifer and, and to be posted on board docs. So we don't Great. get just so Great. we don't get any, uh, open meeting complaints. Um, we have a cultural council picture wall, but Jane, maybe you want to talk about that? Do you know? Uh, I think Maureen can say more than I can. Um, which cult which uh, picture wall are you speaking of, Jane? There was a proposal that you were going to put. Um, you were going to oh, have a. Display. I got it. Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, so this is another project of the Cultural Council right now is that um, there's been a call out uh, for people to submit uh, pictures of Hadley uh, photographs. So the, it's called I Love Hadley and the idea is to choose 10 uh, photographs that then can be put onto uh, postcards that the Cultural Council will pay for and distributed in different places um, around the town, um, like in businesses, for example, that people can just take. Um, um, and then the other idea was to have to be able to post um, uh, to create a, 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 some large um, well, um, designs of the of the actual photographs and have them framed and put into some public places. So there was a question if one of those could hang at the town hall or if there are other spaces where um, they could hang. Yeah, uh, this is uh, looks like. Suggestions are senior center, town hall, library, and local businesses. So yes. I think those are all good ideas. Great. Um, when is what's the time frame, or or how would people submit? Right. So it's already happening, and I have to say that it's been quite overwhelming. We have. Um, hundreds of photographs that people have submitted. So we have a small committee within the Cultural Council right now that is looking at that and they'll be chosen soon so that uh, all the pictures can get out soon um, for summertime and all of that. Um, and tourists, if we have tourists and all of that. So, um, so that's that. So thank you very much. We'll um, be in contact with Jennifer about in terms of where it might go or the size and that kind of thing, but you know, nothing extraordinary, just a, a bigger that kind of thing. I, I think the senior center has special walls, right, Jane, for hanging photos on it? Um, we actually have ex displays of local artists that are every two months. And earlier tonight, you just approved our opening and Maureen, I was gonna get hold of you, but you're here <laughs> and have you encouraged the cultural council to make that part of your agendas too, to join us for those opening nights. Awesome, thank you. I'll have to read more about it because we would love to be there. Or give yeah. me a call. Great. Yeah, I would just say that, you know, we do have limited space in the town hall, but with the new library and a new senior center, I think you could concentrate on those two a little bit more and then switch them around, depending on the size and the availability of space in all the buildings, you know. Great, will do. I'll speak with people directly then at those places. Thank you. Um, can I just clarify, does it mean that the three people who are nominated, Claire Carlson, um, Glenn and um, Glenn Meekham and Michelle Morris Friedman were accepted by the select board? Let me pull up the list here before I say more. Just want to be sure, sure. Yeah, let's see, cultural. Yeah, there's Glenn and Michelle Morris Friedman. Yeah. Yep. 
Glenn Meekum, Claire uh, Carlson, and Michelle Morse Freeman, right? Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. I'll let them know. <laughs> we'll get them but, sworn in. Just to make sure those were the, on the only people you wanted to nominate or you had to- That's correct. No, that was it. Just wanted to make sure. With the meeting being canceled last week, I wasn't sure if it happened or not. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for showing up. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good night. You too. Uh, let me go back to board docs here. And all right, Board of Health Shared Services. Uh, let's see, Dr. Moser, you said was here. She was. And she's not now, okay. But Jane, I think you know about I, this, right? I can speak to this. Okay. So um, the state recognized because of the pandemic how poorly underfunded boards of health were and how there were mandates that were underfunded. So they are now going, throwing a lot of money at boards of health to correct these problems. And um, Northampton has already received an area grant of $300,000 and Hadley would like to join that so that we can participate of some of their um, funds if they are programs that we're interested in. And it doesn't cost us anything, but it does require a town approval. Okay, if I could get a motion to approve. Carolyn, no. Carolyn have you checked into this at all? Or has the Board of Health checked into it, do you know? It actually came from the Board of Health. The, uh, Susan gave it, showed it to me, and J Jane was present as well. And Jane is right, many towns are doing this type of shared services. There is, and I will reiterate, there, at right now there's no cost to the town of Hadley. Okay. Just need a motion. I move. So, second. All right, motion by Jane, second by Amy. Any discussion on the shared services for Board of Health? Mm -hmm. Carolyn? Bill? Yes. Waskevich? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Parson? Yep. All righty. And we'll go down to 6.4, 66 Stockbridge Road, water sewer abatement. And um, I guess I'll, I'll read this. Uh, Chief operator went to the home on 5-9-2021 with a request or at the request of the homeowner. And it was discovered that a one inch register was put on a 5 8 inch meter body on 10-5-2020 in error. We immediately changed out the register because this was in fact causing his usage to be off. I contacted our support at TI Sales, which is the meter vendor, I believe. Uh, where her and I utilized the attached bill correction spreadsheet to calculate what the what usage should have been. Um, it says, this is from Jessica Perone at the DPW. I've discussed this at, at length with Kim Pfeiffer and Chris. We're all in agreement that these amounts are accurate and should be abated for the homeowner at 66 Stockridge Street before the end of the fiscal year. The original is in the mailbox at Town Hall for you. Uh, Chris, did you want to say anything or, or Sue? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, is you, you're right. Exactly what uh, you just read. Uh, one of our new employees, um, why in why uh, on training, did that, and so we corrected it. The homeowner is correct. It was uh, an error from DPW. So I recommend that uh, we should, that the board should abate. And so this is an abatement of, it looks like $80, something like that. No. What's the total here on this form? Um, it's like 145 for water and 121 for sewer. Okay. So are you going to chime in on this? Uh, no, go ahead, Kim, because I was just getting to the thing. <laughs> okay, so there is, so the abatement form that was entered, there are dollar amounts that are listed. I believe it is $819 and change on sewer and about the same on water. Those are the amounts that are being requested for the abatement. Uh, the email that was sent by me should have also been included with the abatement. 
that showed the uh, <laughs> underlined highlighted figure of what the total request was along with a breakdown of water and sewer. Yeah, I, I do see the water and sewer breakdown. Uh, yep, I, I got your email, okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the those dollar amounts of the $100 and change, this occurred over a two cycle period. And the folks, when they received their first bill, they paid it in full. And it was actually, they paid more the first cycle than they would have paid for the entire two cycles. So we're going to be abating the entire second cycle and a portion of the first, which will give them a refund. But the total abatement amounts are the 800 use any extra water it was just that the metering was off so it showed the wrong amount exactly they were overbilled um, excessively uh, in the amount of usage so there was a breakdown of they were billed for uh, like twenty five thousand cubic feet where their usage was actually about five thousand cubic feet because of the dial uh, change there was an extra digit being read which was overbilling them excessively for those two periods so we're glad that it was caught when it was um, and corrected already so this is the best case scenario that we were able to get it corrected uh, thank you to Chris and his his staff for that so the abatement amount like I said is the 1300 and change that's at the bottom of my email referenced along with the breakdown of water and sewer abatement Second. Yeah, Jane, it's the household services are five eighths, and just the heads can be switched from five eighths to one inch. So if you don't have it coordinated from the electronics to the actual size of the flow of the meter, then you get the wrong reading. So I can see that. Big time. Mm -hmm. All right. So motion by Jane, second by Amy. And any other discussion on this? Carolyn? Bill? Yes. Uh, Upstate. Nevin Smith? Yes. Carson? Yes. All right. Moving along to Thank seven. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, moving on to 7.2, 47 Bay Road. Uh, I know Carolyn had done a bunch of let her talk about and give us the overview before we make a decision. Okay. So um, what I did is I reached out to several department heads that would um, have some knowledge of that uh, location. And as you can see in that, uh, that kind of a, an assessment of the feedback that I got back, um, there, there would be a cost involved um, for the town to take that uh, property that um, is suggested to get donated. Um, there would be a significant cost in uh, the possibility of abatement tearing down the building. Um, it is presently my understanding um, a non-conforming lot. So to rebuild would be an issue. I did check with uh, the engineers who I'm working with, with the levy assessment to see if in the future, would that be a possible uh, property that would be valuable for the le a, a new levy. It's too, uh, it, it, it's too premature in their evaluation to say whether that would be of any value or not. Um, they felt that the property was very close to the, the I guess the brook, if that's what you call it, if I'm using the right term, um, which was a is, which is a little tight from that to wetlands to the, to the property. So they really could not say, yeah, that would be valuable. It would be worthwhile to the town. Um, but there was, as that information that I shared with you, just the cost of tearing it down and the abatement and the cleanup of, of the debris that's there in the, the previous uses that was used at that site um, was well over $30,000. Um, so there were some other items on there, but that's kind of the general summary of, of that property. Uh, you know, one of the benefits would be is that property would be cleaned up if the town owned it, but it would be at the potential cost of taxpayers to clean that up. Maybe something to put it on town meeting. Uh, are you asking me that, John, to put that at town meeting? Yeah, either you or David. Is it? Can we do that? Because that seems like a good chunk of money at the taxpayers' 
cost for a single property that is would, essentially not maintained, but. I would just be leaning to say no to it. I mean, I'd like to get it cleaned up, to get rid of the eyesore. Um, and, you know, maybe we could use it down the road if we did ex extend the levy system at some point, but I think we're too far off and I, I just don't want to spend the money at this point to clean it up. So I agree with that. And I think that the town should vote on if they want to use their taxpayer dollars or not to deal with it. Yeah, I, th I think it's worth thinking about putting on bond fall town meetings. So. Susan? I think the problem you run into is the liability issues. Um, there were um, a number of uh, uses of that property where they were breaking down um, equipment and that type of thing. I don't, I would hate to see the town go ahead and take this property and then have DEP come in and say, you need to clean it all up. Um, that would be a huge expense. Um, I I agree with you, David. I would just say no, because so uh, we. But I have a question. But sure. the like weeds taking over the property, I don't think there's too much contamination there. It's, the weeds are growing out of control everywhere on that property. I drove. And you don't know though, John. <laughs> But the thing is, so if we say no, like, if, so if we actually voted today and we said, no, we don't want to deal with it, this isn't, does it down the road end up becoming our problem anyway? Or? Yeah, if she abandons it and we take it for taxes, then we're going to have to clean it up anyway. We're not required to do tax title on it, though. That That's an option for the town. But her, I mean, I wouldn't uh, take on her liability now um right. i mean uh, you know we were just bantering around things i mean a, a farmer may want to put a farm stand there or you know she she needs to look at some other options before she comes to the town and says you know you take on all of my liabilities i if that's I can, sensible if, if it's okay if i just add this as well it was in that assessment um just since the nine months I've been here and de dealing with different properties, um, the, the cost of legal fees just to assess these situations and to find out the liability, um, the transaction, uh, all of the factors is um, very, it's, it's significant on how, it, it's thousands of dollars. So that I just wanna add that even if it were to go to town meeting, we'd still have to get, I'd have to get some more input regarding that, that location. So I just want to make sure you guys have a full, um, and that was the intent of that report, that you would have a full understanding of the potential costs involved. And you also have to understand that there is no insurance that would cover any kind of pollution cleanup for the town. So that's specifically excluded. Yeah. I move we do not accept this property. I second that. I'm sorry. I wish we could be more helpful, but it's not a good time to be spending a lot of money. Got a motion by Jane and a second by Amy. And, uh, you know, I, I agree 100%. The property has been an eyesore for a long time. I'd love to clean it up and just have an open space there. But unfortunately, we don't really know what we're getting into. And we just don't have the funds to do it at this point. Um, so maybe we can maybe we can figure something else out in the future. You know. Anything else? On this? No. All right, Carolyn. Phil. Yes. Laskevich. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Carson. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, let's go down to liaison reports real quick before we go to Carolyn's long long report. Um, if we just go down the line and kind of update everybody on what they've been working on, I can tell you, I'll just start with the DPW um, and also the um, Agricultural Committee. Uh, we finally have some right to farm signs up in town. 
I know um, uh, Matt Kushai was saw those. Yeah, working on getting those up. I know there's one up in uh, at least at the Sunderland line and I haven't driven around, but I'm sure there's others up as well. There's uh, one on 47 okay. by Barstow's. And those were approved, I want to say last year at town meeting to be purchased. So I know they, they got those worked out and they're finally at the town borders. Um, as far as the DPW goes, uh, the guys have been busy with, um, well, water main breaks. Uh, we had a, a huge one in front of the Legion this past weekend. Uh, they always seem to happen on the weekend at night, like 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. And, uh, uh, you know, thank you to um, Scott McCarthy, Gary Berg, Ray Russell. Um, I know John popped in for a minute, Dennis Pip, all the guys that, uh, you know, kind of dropped everything and worked. Uh, I don't know, John, it was what, a good 12 hours or so that it took him to uh, get the thing repaired. Unfortunately, we couldn't get any contractors to come and help us. So the guys were uh, really hustling on their own and, and, and got things repaired. I know there was issues with finding officers for traffic control and everything else, you know, Father's Day weekend and, and whatnot, and uh, being right on Route 9. So that's what the guys have been working on, just projects like that. And um, that's all I have. Jane, you want to go next? So uh, the diversity committee is was happy to um, acknowledge the recognition of Juneteenth and the church rang their bells in town. There wasn't time for them to plan further celebrations. They did participate in Amherst and they continue um, working on various uh, educational informational programs. Um, the Climate Control Committee is actively working now that town meeting passed the, um, oh, I've lost the word, um, stretch code. Um, the transfer, we now have a transfer, um, what's her title? She's recycling coordinator, um, has discovered that there are ways that the town can actually get money for simply documenting what we do with a few minor things. Um, so that's very exciting. The money would obviously be used for additional things that have to do with recycling, but nonetheless, it would let the town do things that was not costing us anything, so to speak. Those are my two reports. All right. Amy, you want to go next? You got anything from the schools or? I do not. Right. John? Uh, I don't have the library's final decisions, but they were to uh, replace that loam in front of the building in a few bad spots. And uh, the man who gave them the bid on it, because I guess the original contractor backed out of it, uh, they want to leave it until fall time so they can put some good seed in and remove the rocks and the concrete and put some good loam back in and make it look nice on the middle street side, you know, where it's pretty bad. How about the uh, punch list items? I know there was a bunch of other roof and I think it looks like Tommy's on here. Yeah, but uh, Tommy's on. You can ask him about the roof. They're waiting for the manufacturer to come back on the shingles. So I don't know where they were at that Tommy are you around oh, that's okay I stepped away for a second um, all right Carolyn you want to go with your uh, town administrator report sure uh, so the, I'll just gonna update you on some procurement that we're in the middle of doing uh, there's quite a few actually the transfer station uh, there was a site visit on Monday one company showed up out of the three that we think are going to be bidding uh, we'll, they are sending questions in this week and uh, they're due on Monday. So we will hopefully have um, a decision by the end of the month. Um, David, Phil and I met with a few representatives from Eversource um, at the transfer station to look at um, a possible solar project in the future. It's really just in the conversation phase, but there might be some interest from Eversource as a utility, which in many ways can be more beneficial to the town. Uh, so we did a tour. Yes, I had high heels in the mud at the transfer station, <laughs> um, but it was actually very informative. I learned a lot and it was great to have David there to ask questions since he knew the history of the transfer station and where property was in the town. But it really was, it was I felt it was a very informative um, visit. 
um, and I think with some potential uh, benefits to the town. So that happened uh, this last week. Uh, the emergency generator for the emergency complex, uh, that quote has been signed and that is proceeding. Uh, the fiber optic phase two, uh, that contract is signed, uh, but that is gonna be about 16 weeks out. Um, everything, as you guys all know, everything is, is backlogged. So we, we have a wait on both of those projects. Uh, then we're, um, we are, the, the upcoming uh, procurement, we're gonna be looking at the library and the senior center for solar, as well as the board of health food inspections. That was just for a year. We're probably going to rebid that beginning in September. I'll keep you updated, but that's what's down the road right now. A couple contracts that we are gonna extend is, um, we were gonna do an RFP for legal. However, as you're aware, we're in some litigation that I don't think it's prudent to change our legal firm at this point. So we are gonna extend that for another year. That would be my recommendation and, and I'll uh, have that document ready for you guys for the next meeting. Um, no update on North Hadley Village Hall. That right now is in the hands of the court. Right now we have no update. And the date for town meeting, I did talk with Annie, the superintendent to see what would be the best date. And um, my recommendation would be October 21st. Um, for you guys to ponder that. You certainly don't have to make a vote on that this today, but um, just to keep that, to mark that on your calendar, that might be the best date, October 21st. The ribbon cutting, uh, one of the mixed blessings of not meeting last Wednesday, is I did actually have an opportunity to sit next to the Lieutenant Governor um, at a dinner and talk to her about Hadley and that we really would like to um, uh, have her and the governor here. It's gonna be a little easier, I think, to have the Lieutenant Governor here. She also has a real strong liking to Western Mass. So I think she would be a great representative for the for the governor. Um, I am uh, working with her schedule right now. Uh, they like an eight week warning, uh, but I would like to have you know a three month warning to get her here. Um, but the schedule and I are gonna talk more back and forth uh, once she knows who's invited and how we're gonna proceed. Um, and so I'm going to be reaching out to uh, Chief Spanknable, Haley, and um, Patrick to get together to see how we want to proceed on planning that ribbon cutting ceremony. And um, I have had the opportunity to uh, plan a lot of these. So, um, you know, I, I talked with David about I'd be happy to lead that if that was okay um, to be able to help coordinate that. So that's where that is. And the governor's lifting of the state emergency. I just, we, I did let all of the boards and committees know that they now can meet. They have a choice. They can meet remotely still. They can meet uh, in person or they can meet in a hybrid model. A little, we're still going to be working on that with, with um, John from Hadley Media to see how that would work. Um, everyone agrees that the civic engagement is much better uh, remotely right now. Um, but I, I know there's an advantage of meeting in person. Um, so that is, uh, I did inform all of the boards that they would, um, that they have those choices. The key is with, with all of the boards and committees is that it has to be clearly stated where and how the boards are going to be in the committees will meet as well as uh, even if a partial board member, partial board members are remote and some are in person, with the public, uh, you still have to do a, um, a roll call vote, but if the whole board is present physically, they do not have to do a roll call vote. So I'm just giving you some information that probably isn't really you care about right now, but in case any of the board committees are, are watching, I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, so I'm glad, I'm glad Joyce isn't here because she's gonna get frustrated, but I, I do have an opportunity to work with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on another, uh, Russell School Reuse Feasibility Study. And I, I am conf I, I'm a little bit more confident with this one. It's, it's a, one of the employees that I've worked with in the past um, and gotten some successful grants with John O'Leary from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So um, I hope I have your backing that once again, we're gonna look to write a grant to take a look at that building that will look at you know, several different areas as far as um, you know, what some of the, um, the, the infrastructure issues are, what the utility needs are, um, look at redevelopment opportunities, which would include housing and commercial and mixed uses, and just identify any zoning obstacles, 
It would also look at a marketing strategy for alternatives, which I think is really kind of what our roadblock right now is, is how do we market that for use um, and just try to try to get a cost analysis of what it would cost um, for any of the analysis that they come up with. Um, so that's it. But just um, also a reminder that tomorrow, Chief Spanknagel, Spanknagel is getting voted as the first vice president for the Western Mass Fire Chiefs Association. So kudos to Chief. Oh, good for him. That's it. Yep. We just made John's day by talking about grants for Russell School. So I see him smiling over there. <laughs> yep. Well, we're on the grants. Where are we at with the water? Water yeah. the sewer? Yeah. So I just, yep. I just heard back from, the, from them today. They want to change the category that I submitted it in um, into um, a, another category. And I talked for a while from the executive office that is um, – from uh, the Mass Works. So we're, I'm probably gonna be working with them a little bit more tomorrow because I have to have it all again, re redo a whole section and yep. send it in. Um, Did you have to mention it to the Lieutenant Governor also? Yep, yep. Right. And both uh, our uh, legislatures know about it and, our, right. and had gave letters of support for it. So it, it is gonna, there's a little tricky part and it hardly is, there's a little niche that we're kind of stuck in um, that I'm going to have to do some um, ex extra explanations about how Route 9 fits in with the, the farming community and that that's where our focus in it is, is in our development as well. So I'll do the best I can. All right. Keep up the good work. Thanks, John. All right. Any uh, announcements? Yes, I have one. Congratulations to Stanley Phil, who will turn 100 next week. There will be a party for him at the Senior Center at 2 o'clock on Friday. Any other announcements? I think our next meeting is July 7th, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, unless you might have to sign a contract. I will know more at the end of the week, and it might be a really quick meeting um, at the end of the month, but I'll, I'll keep you updated. Very quick, I promise. Is that for the transfer station? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, if I could get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Right. Motion by Third. <laughs> Phil. Yes. Moskevich. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Parson. Yes. All right. Good night, everyone.